can join with me as I say that during this time I have been richly blessed in the Lord to be in his house. I have not only myself been blessed, but I have been able to see that many other brethren have been greatly blessed. And I'm during this time of blessing, I'm very glad that we serve a Lord who loves to bless. Amen. Ephesians 1, 1 through 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Amen. Truly the Lord has been here. The law is for the lawless. I have seen very lately, being in certain camps, that many people don't seem to realize that we aren't under law anymore. They talk to us like we want to sin. And it really does grieve me, because I don't want to. And the law provokes sin. And when people speak to you like you want to, then you start thinking about it, and it makes it much harder not to. Amen. Amen. First Timothy 1 Timothy 1.9 Knowing this, that the Lord is not, has not made us, that the law is not made for a righteous person, but for the lawless and insubordinate, for the ungodly, for sinners, for the unholy and profane. In Christ, we are no longer lawless. Amen. For our Lord, through Christ, has written his law in our hearts. The law showed us we needed a savior. It showed us our sin, and in Christ, we have no sin. For his blood covers us and sanctifies us for the Lord. Law could not save us. Law demanded, but gave us no salvation. The law was holy, but we were not. We were stained with sin, and the law could not reign in an unholy temple. God could not be within us under the law because our hearts were not like God's. In Christ, we are saved and made holy. God wanted fellowship with man. Law could not bring the fellowship God wanted because it put us in a have to but don't want to situation where we had to do it, but if we had the choice, we would sin. And God wanted a heart that truly did want to do right and to be like him. And grace gives us that kind of heart. Amen. Law demanded much but grace demands more. We live in a time where people think that grace is just kind of letting us off, that law was much harder than grace. But where law said, don't steal, grace said, don't covet in your heart. Mm -hmm. Where law said, don't commit adultery, grace says, don't lust. Mm -hmm. Because God can't abide in a heart that wants to do wrong. Amen. We, if we did live under law, which we really can't because the law brought death, then um, as long as we wanted, oh, excuse me, as long as we wanted to do that which the law wanted to do, then we were okay. But under law, law didn't give us a new nature, so we didn't want to do that. And that really did grieve God. It grieved him so much that he sent his only begotten son that we would be able to have a new heart, that we would be able to fellowship with him because we wanted and rejoiced in the same things that he does. Amen. 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 We have this kind of fellowship through grace because through grace the law is written in our hearts and on our minds and like David we we can meditate on the law and we love it law could only bring us so far to God it put up barriers for us because like I said that we didn't have a new nature we didn't have the mind of Christ and grace gives us the mind of Christ many people don't seem to focus on that, but that is a very important part of salvation. Amen. Because without the mind of Christ, we can't truly live to God. Amen. If we don't think like God, 
If we don't reason like God, we won't be like God. And no one in heaven isn't going to be like God. And so one reason that I'm very thankful for these meetings is that they are helping me to understand more of our Lord and are making me more like God because I want to be more like God. Romans six seventeen and 18. But God, be thanked that through, though you were slaves to sin, yet you obeyed from your heart, your heart, that from the doctrine to which you were delivered, and having been set from sin, set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. Even so we are blessed to be slaves of righteousness. Slaves not in the sense that we were slaves under law. Under law, people were frightened. People obeyed the law because they were scared of being punished by death because God could not, could not be in the midst of sin. And law truly didn't take away sin because it didn't take the weight, the want for sin. People didn't show it externally. Well, some did. But even in that case, we weren't holy. And the grace God gives us makes a way for us to be holy to God. And I'm very thankful for that. Grace has opened more doors for us to please God Actually, under law, we really couldn't please God because, well, we weren't like Him. Anything unlike God can't please God. Amen. And by being under grace, we please Him. It, it makes me sad, though, that through all that God went through and Christ went through to bring us grace so that we could have a closer fellowship with God that people don't consider it very deeply. It's very light to them. It's not all that important where to God it was everything. And to me it is everything. Amen. I am very thankful that we no longer live under law. Amen. Through this time of being here I've seen many things have many thoughts that have really blessed me because it showed me how very great our Lord's grace is, yes. how very far it reaches. Law could bring us far, well, because before there was no way really to get to God, but sin, law could not truly bring us to God because of our sin. We were not holy. And in the grace we have been made holy. Amen. Like Christ is. And many people don't really think about, I've, at camp, in places like that, you talk about the mind of Christ and being made more perfect and people can't believe you. How can we be like God? You know, when they, they talk about how they're not like God. Well, you know, you say, well, this is how God would want it. And I know it's hard. And they say, oh, yeah, it's hard. It's really hard. I want to say, not me. It's not hard for me. Because I want to do it. Amen. And people, it's very hard to talk to people like that when they don't realize that your heart is really changed under grace. Amen. People like my Brother Harold brought up that they say grace, but they mean law. I think we're still living under law. We, we don't want to, but we do it anyway. And if we do that, then we will eventually get to heaven. And I'm very thankful it isn't that way. Because under that way, see, God can't drag us into heaven. And a lot of people that I talk to seem to have that mentality that God's going to drag them into heaven. Because you can tell by talking to them, that they really don't want to go. But they don't want to go to hell, so they'll go to heaven. 
and it's <laughs> it's very depressing to not be able to have mutual fellowship that I have here. To talk to people who are still under the law mentality. And I'm thankful that the Lord has taken away my law mentality, which I once did have. I used to think that because I would say the right things, call them Sunday school answers. You have the right answers, and so you're good. But see, that didn't bring me close to God. Now, I did it with a good heart. I really did think I was pleasing God. But when I realized what grace was for and how God really wanted fellowship with me, he wanted me to be involved. He wanted me to meditate on his word and to have his heart to not only do the things that he wanted me to do, but to want to do them, then I felt very loved. And I changed my way of thinking, and only God can do that. Amen. Only God can change your way of thinking. Law did not change your way of thinking. It said do and live, but didn't give us the means to do. I'm reminded of a poem that reads, Run, John, run, the law demands, and gives me neither feet nor hands. Fly, John, fly, grace does cry, then gives me wings to soar on high. Law gave us the means, no, excuse me, law did not give us the means <laughs> to do it demanded. And law, um, grace calls us much higher in law. God wanted us to be able to soar in the heavenlies with him. Amen. And he gave grace to us so that we would be able to do that. So many times I meet people who really don't know what God's grace is. Which is very heavy on my heart because we are living under grace. Amen. A lot of people don't know what the peace of God is. When really, that is how we last through the storms of life. Many people don't know what joy is. They think it's happiness. Happiness is not joy. Happiness comes and goes. Happiness is only soul deep. Your spirit, in your spirit, you have joy. I can't. There was a man talking about the joy of the Lord, which really wasn't the joy of the Lord. It was being happy. And he said that we should be going around yelling praise the Lord and being happy all the time, which is really hard, especially for a believer to do, because this world grieves our souls. It grieves us in our spirit. And we can't be happy all the time. No one can. But see, this is in our home. And now we use the mind of Christ, the peace that God gives, and the joy that God gives to last and stay firm here. And I'm very thankful that during this time, God has given me a greater measure of these things. And I pray that what I'm saying is, also doing you benefit too. God has given us so much through his son. And I'm seeing that more and more because I'm partaking of more and more. Mm -hmm. The more of you partake of it, the more you realize that you don't have it all. <laughs> Sometimes you know, I go with Dad when he goes to preach, and a lot of times the people my age and even some of the adults don't have as much understanding as I do. And I'm not boasting. It's an observation. <laughs> and uh, it's very easy in those times to be caught up thinking, I'm pretty godly. I'm pretty smart. You know, because people will tell you that. But then 
we come to places like these, you realize how much more understanding you need, how much you didn't have, and how, mu how great the understanding that has been given to you is. So many times, it's easy to be caught up in pride because of that, but I'm thankful for these times because the Lord uses these to humble me and also uses these times to strengthen me so that it is harder for me to become proud because I'm reminded of how very great God is and how much I need to know Him more. See, I don't even, I don't just need to, I want to. And that's why these times are such a great blessing. I have really enjoyed everything that has been said. And I hope that, well, I know that the Lord will use the people who are going to be speaking in a great way. Because I have been praying that. I really have. I'm sure you have too. But see, the Lord can express different facets of himself in different people. He gives each of us, we are all in his image, but some of the parts of his image which he has put in other people are greater than other parts. Some people, that just shines more brightly. And it really does bless you. When we're in a body like this, it shows the whole image of God. And it really does strengthen me because I feel like I'm basking in his glory. And I, I really long for the time where in eternity I'll be able to do that Amen. forever in the fullness of his glory. Grace and peace to you.